Hey channel, Fernando from SkyFi Audio. Today I'm gonna to do something a little bit different. I'm gonna make a video catalog of every preamp we've got in stock. Um, ben has pulled them all out from the shelves. We're still gathering them. We're gonna have well over 30, 35 units, maybe into the 40s. I'm gonna spend a minute or two on each of the units, spinning around, show you the front, the back, what it comes with, what the price is, and so on. So stay on, uh, this is gonna be a long video, but I'll try to index them as well so you can kind of jump ahead to each of the videos. So this is a Moran 7. This is considered to be one of the best vintage preamps out there. Highly, highly collectible. And this one is in beautiful condition. This is a consignment piece from a client who took amazing care of this piece since new. Look at the metal work on it. So this is a two preamp with a phono section. It's got treble and bass controls independently for left and right channels, which is kind of neat. Uh, lots of inputs, even a microphone input. Um, uh, several FM, AM, tape head, phono, you name it. Uh, on the back, typical Marantz build quality for the era, which was really ahead of its time. Here are the two cages um, below. Super clean RCA jacks. Really uh, great casework as well. Probably about the cleanest we've seen in, in a very long time. This Moran 7 is being offered at $10,000 and it comes as you see, um, pretty much just the unit itself. This is a Moran 7T. So um, a little bit ago we did the, the 7, which is the old tube unit. This is a solid state variant of the 7T. Very, very similar layout. Uh, the controls are pretty much all the same. Uh, just that what's internally is very different. Um, Again, independent left and right uh, treble and bass controls, tons and tons of inputs and outputs, beautiful champagne gold finish, uh, metal work on the unit, and a totally different layout in the back as well. Um, we've got the inputs and outputs uh, arranged vertically here. Uh, we've got tapes, microphones, two sets of phonos, tuner TV, AUX1 and AUX2. Here are uh, tape outputs, amplifier outputs, uh, dual RCAs for that. Very, very well equipped and a bunch of switchable outlets in case you've got other vintage equipment. This is being offered uh, for $24.99 on our website in very, very good condition. I think we rated this an 8, which is very hard to do for a piece of this vintage. This is an Audi Research SP14. Again, SP delineates that it's a full function preamp, including phono section. This is a hybrid model from Audi Research. There weren't a lot, but this is one of them. I use this in my 10th bench here at the shop for a couple of years, lovely piece. Um, it has a single tube for the phono stage and the line stages are all uh, transistor driven. Uh, as you can see, there are tons of knobs here compared to the other order research, a lot more options, attenuation, um, modes, you know, you can switch between stereo and mono and reverse, et cetera. Uh, both record and input selections. And at the bottom, you've got controls for outlets, bypass, mute, tape copies, monitoring, you name it. Full, full featured in traditional uh, audio research look and feel. On the back, uh, three sets of convenience outlets and very high quality RCA jacks, gold plated RCA jacks. Um, doubling up on the RCA outputs, um, two sets of out for record and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven sets of inputs, including two tape loops and the phono that I mentioned before. This is being offered at $3,000. It's been lightly serviced and working absolutely beautifully. Going back in time in Macintosh history, we're going to the C11, Macintosh C11 uh, two preamplifier. This one has received the full restoration from Audio Classics and it is in terrific shape. Uh, the metal work is super clean and so is the glass work. Beautiful early uh, preamp from Macintosh. Looking at the back, you can see they took the time and replaced every single RCA connector with a gold-plated modern interpretation of it. And uh, even the low-level inputs have been placed on their own little board. Um, convenience outlets over here, tons of inputs and outputs. 
and traditional sort of early Macintosh look using these toggles for all sorts of features, compensation, tape, phase, rumble, you name it. So again, um, highly functional phono, two sets of phono inputs, just about every feature you'd want in a vintage preamp, including uh, individual trouble controls for left and right, which is kind of nice to have. This is being offered at $5,000 on our website, and it comes as you see with uh, new tubes as well. And one of my favorite preamps here, at least tuner preamps, this is a Rebox. Uh, model number is A720. It's a, it's a preamp tuner, so we're kind of going a little bit outside the genre, but super cool. Look at this display. Utilizing Nixie tubes for the station presets or the station indicator. It is a delay to look at and to use. You can see the unit mutes in between stations and it responds pretty quickly. Um, tuner preamp means it's a preamplifier and has the ability to receive FM stations. No AM capabilities on this unit. Super cool sliders for volume and balance. Uh, very 1970s. Um, our station presets are right here. And they're all working brilliantly. And the memory tuning, this is actually how you set your station presets. You actually have to dial them in. Uh, treble, bass, and presence control. That's an unusual thing to see. Um, mode for reverse, stereo, mono, etc., and the input selection, which is um, done here. Uh, up here are just other features for the, let's see, binaural in and out. This is controlling our outputs, uh, loudness, tape select, very, very cool piece. G gorgeous condition, it uses this sort of gray uh, and aluminum finish that was traditional from the 700 series at Rebox. Wooden side panels, and on the back, uh, we're glad to see not very many DIN connectors. This uh, did receive RCA jacks throughout, which is super good. Uh, and this will work internationally, so if you are outside of our, our market and require a different voltage, this will do 220, 250 uh, reliably, as these were European units. Uh, this is being offered at $24.99, and you'll be hard-pressed to find a better-looking uh, 720 or at least one in better condition than this. Here we have a Conrad Johnson Premier 14 aftermarket level. I'm sorry, after Macintosh, uh, Conrad Johnson tends to do super well here at the shop. Uh, Premier 14 is about a middle of the line for Conrad Johnson. Um, it's a line stage preamp, so no phono section in this thing. Uh, volume control is uh, numerically indicated and controlled with a push button here. These are actual toggles, uh, momentary toggles, and the Source selection is done by person right here. So minimalist design from Conrad Johnson, no rotary controls whatsoever. It is a tube preamplifier utilizing four, uh, four tubes internally. Tons of ins and outs, including two sets of uh, external processor loops, um, and then one, two, three, four, five um, line level inputs. One is labeled phono, but there is no phono section built into this, uh, as we can see by the lack of a ground lug. I'll give you a shot of the internals. Uh, I'm going to pan over the computer. You can see how beautifully built this is. They put all the audio circuitry within its own case, in internal to the external case, and all the switching relays here in the back. Nice, nice piece. Um, here's the display uh, lit up, and it's being offered on our website for $3,000. So this is an interesting piece. These are um, Krell KBLs, which are stereo preamps. And, but back in the 1990s, you had the option of, of doubling up and going full dual mono. And that's what we did here. We sourced two KBLs and configured them internally to be a dual mono, dual chassis uh, preamp, which is spectacular. This is about a, as good stereo separation if you're gonna get in any sort of preamp going to a total of four chassis, and I say four because we've got the left and right channels, and then we've got the power supplies independent for each of the preamps. Typical Krell battleship gray fat industrial look. Um, five sets of inputs, three, two sets of monitor outputs, uh, and then the symmetry here is actually the balance control, which becomes really a secondary gain control in mono mode, uh, and then the level here. So you do have to utilize both volume controls to set it. 
Um, this is a nice feature, um, and I wish more preamps had this. Uh, great gain controls here, uh, so you can actually match this a bit better to your amplifiers. Uh, on the back, tons of ins and outs. We've got two sets of XLR inputs, one set of XLR output, and then everything else in RCAs. Uh, these are the connections here for the power supplies that I showed you above. This is being offered at 7,000. Um, and again, if you're interested in just one of these units, it would break our hearts, but we'd split them up for you. If you want just a single KVL, we've got you covered. Um, there is a nice video. I did a deep dive into this particular series uh, a while back, so I'll link to that in the description as well. This is 1990s, um, and we've got uh, a printed manual, and we'll make our unboxing on this one. And it will come with the power supplies and the umbilicals required. So Krell KVL. Yeah, so first of all, sorry about the glare on this one. The Mac stuff is super hard to film. Uh, Macintosh C42 control center. They call it an audio control center. It's just a preamp with fancy uh, naming convention. This is a super cool, uh, clean example of a C42. C42 is, a, is an all analog unit before they started putting DACs and other things in preamps. Uh, and it has a real nice equalizer built into it. If you can see here, we've got a four band equalizer, which stands makes this piece stand out from other uh, preamps. Um, and not all Macintosh preamps have equalizers. So if you've got a vintage set of speakers and you want to get a little more umph out of them, I recommend you look at a preamp with EQ settings on it. Typical um, Macintosh fashion. Uh, this one I like in particular because it has a large numeric display for the volume control. So if you are sitting across the room, you can actually tell what volume you're at because you can read this from within 10, 15 feet. Um, all glass front, typical of Macintosh, super deep cabinet, and look at all these uh, connections here. Just about everything you'd ever want. Uh, I love seeing three sets of outputs on, on Mac pieces. It gives me extra flexibility. So you've got output one, output two, and then the main output. And these are independently switchable. So you, if you wanted a second zone or the ability to control a second amplifier, um, these are super handy. A single set of uh, XLR inputs. If you need more XLR inputs, probably the C2200 that I featured earlier is a better fit for you. Full function, meaning we've got a phono section that is configurable and, I don't know, two, four, six, seven sets of inputs on top of phono. Tons of record connections, et cetera, et cetera. So super nice piece from Macintosh Audio. Um, on our website, you'll find this being offered at uh, $44.99. And this preamp is com comes from Aesthetics. It's called the Callisto. It's a line stage preamp, meaning we've got no phono section in it. And it's actually a three chassis unit. And I'll show you that online. Uh, we didn't pull it all down, but here you go. It's um, independent power supplies for left and right channels. And then the controller, which is what we've got here. It's being offered at $84.99. This has really needed step attenuators inside, independent left and right volume attenuators. Uh, we cracked those open and they're absolutely beautiful. So again, three chassis, um, five or six sets of inputs, one of them being phono, but not phono capable. Um, we did have a matching three chassis phono section, believe it or not, that went with this, that sold out. Um, here we've got the left and right channel uh, power connectors and uh, you can see it's a dual mono design because if you were to split it down here in the middle you'd end up with two independent preamps including power supplies so the real real deal here so three chassis full mono um, three sets of outputs including a tape and um, one set of uh, two sets of XLR inputs and one set of XLR outputs and that's aesthetics. And this is still being offered uh, today. I think they've changed the look and the chassis, but essentially they're still making the same product and it's uh, some crazy amount of money. So. Another Macintosh preamp. This one's a step down from the 42, a little bit more affordable, being offered at $29.99. Again, it's the C30er from Macintosh. They're calling this a control center, typical glass uh, faceplate, uh, real easy to use. You've got record here, you got listening on the right, Volume control, loudness, treble and bass control. So no equalizer on this thing, just a very clean sounding, very simple uh, Mac piece, probably from the 1990s. 
On the back, again, simplicity. Uh, four sets of outlets, one set of uh, XLR outputs, which is a real nice plus if you've got uh, XLRs on your amplifier, and as many inputs and outputs as you'd ever want in a preamp, essentially. Um, again, $29.99 on our website, SkyFi Audio. And this is a remote controllable preamp, one of the earlier ones. You can see the window here, the sensor here for the remote control. And it also has a headphone jack. Jumping forward to the mid-2000s with this Mark Levinson number 38S preamp, line stage preamp, no phono section on this one. This is the second iteration, the S version. I had this uh, when I was in college. Um, not this particular unit, but this model. Actually, I think I just had the regular 38. Uh, super reliable, very, very well built, nice, easy to use. Typical 1990s, 2000s Macintosh look and feel. Beautiful casework and the circuitry is absolutely divine on the inside. And these will operate reliably indefinitely. Um, and enough connections um, to handle just that about everything. It's got the dual mono design in the back where you're splitting left and right channels. Four sets of inputs at RCA, two sets of balanced, and then one each balanced and RCA for the outputs. This pairs up really nice with their DAC, which is the 36. Uh, with their amplifiers from this series, 331, 32, and 33. Um, and their CD player, the C39, which is one of my favorite CD players from the, from the 2000s. This is being offered at $34.99, and it does come with a Mark Levinson remote. And the original box, believe it or not, we have a full kit on this unit. So you'll receive just about everything how it uh, would have left the factory. Okay, this is a Japanese market AccuFace C222 preamp, full featured, including a phono section. This was imported from Japan. It was a 100 volt unit, which we converted here to 120 volts. Um, so no need for transformers or anything else. Typical AccuFace look. It's got a rose gold um, brushed look with um, rosewood uh, casework. Real, real presentable, very, very pretty uh, unit itself. Uh, internally, we were pretty impressed by the phono section in particular. Um, selections are done here for inputs, volume is there, and uh, just about everything we'd want, including the ability to load the, the phono section from the front panel, which we've always liked. Uh, on the back, typical Japanese simplicity here. We've got five sets of inputs, uh, two record tape loops, and two sets of outputs and some convenience outlets. We've relabeled this 120 volts, removable IC power cord, and uh, loading here for the moving magnet is done in the back, but for the moving coil is done in the front. Beautiful condition, uh, fairly rare piece from AccuFace being offered at $26.99 on our website. And it comes just as you see, no other accessories. So now we're diving into my personal collection. This is a Tamburg 3018A. Over the last couple of decades, I assembled um, the best components from the 3000 series of Tamburg. I'm a huge Tamburg fanboy, and uh, there were, you know, probably 10 to 15 models made in the 3000 series of everything: tuners, cassette decks, amps, preamps. So one day I decided to kind of hone the collection and just pick the best from each one of them. And this is their flagship preamp, and this is uber rare. Even though it looks to be the least expensive one from the lack of controls on the front, I assure you this is their flagship. Internally, it is an absolute work of art. Very simple to use. All we've got is a volume and a balance control, inputs, outputs, subsonic filter, and a headphone. Nothing else, but internally, it makes up for it. Uh, on the back, you can differentiate this from the other 3000 preamps by the gold-plated um, chassis-mounted RCA connectors. And uh, phono section is uh, adjusted here in the back for moving coil and moving magnet. Uh, some uh, savvy uh, viewer pointed out to me not long ago that these are not the correct side panels for this. These, um, the 3018 was slightly taller along with the CD player. So these, although they look beautiful, they're slightly off by about a sixteenth of an inch. This is not on our website yet. Uh, I was gonna pair it with the 3016 amplifier. But if you're interested in this piece, just reach out to me, uh, info at skyfiaudio.com, and I'll uh, discuss this piece with you. So again, the 3018A from Tanberg. This is a Krell KXR preamp. One of the most unique preamps I've seen. I wish I'd plugged it in for you, but the, the way the controls work are really unique. 
um, and the way the display scrolls. Uh, internally is absolutely beautiful. Stepped attenuators. Um, the case looks like it was machined out of solid aluminum. Uh, this is not on our website as of today, but it will be very, very shortly. I imagine by the time you see this video, you might find it. Um, KXR is the model, uh, dual mono design, as you can see here, left and channels, left and right channels split down the middle, uh, and really uh, RCA and, and XLR jacks for just about everything, or each of the seven or eight inputs. So as much as you'd want. Uh, this has a uh, remote control and um, I'm not quite sure if we have the box for it. Actually, we don't, but it does have the, the pretty interesting remote control. I don't have a price on this yet, I'm sorry guys, but it's the KXR on the website. This is Mark Levinson, uh, number 326S. So this is a, a generation newer than the 36S that I featured earlier. I'm not quite sure if this is current model, but it's pretty close to being line level or line stage preamp. Um, here in the back, we'll see uh, left channel and right channels are separated down the middle and um, at least four sets of RCA inputs and three sets of XLR inputs and the outputs for both left and right channels. Uh, this is a remote controlled preamp. It comes with a remote and it's being offered at $64.99. Uh, let me just show you the internals because it's quite notable. Beautiful belt here. All right, so the Mark Levinson 326 solid state preamp. All right, this audio research LS25 is um, a generation newer than the audio audio researches we featured. Um, LS meaning it's a line stage. There is no phono section in this preamp. Um, it's hard to make out in the video, but this is a momentary volume control, which is unique to this piece. So you kind of like turn it clockwise and you see the LEDs increment to reflect the volume. So this is a remote controlled preamp where a lot of the vintage ones weren't. Uh, same for the balanced and the inputs. They're all LED uh, indicated. Uh, this is a tube a preamp, a fully balanced, as uh, so you can see in the back, every single connector is offered both single-ended and in balanced mode. Uh, it is the MK2 variant, which has some revisions to the circuitry and improvements. <clears throat> and let me show you the internals of the unit. Uh, beautiful components throughout, great part selection. This, <clears throat> this does come with a remote and uh, the original box as well. Here's a better shot of the, uh, the internal layout of the components. Here you can see the tubes for left and right channels and the power supply section here on the right. So it's been offered at $39.99 and it's the Audio Research LS25 MK2. All right, if you watch the channel, you know that we do a lot of uh, Macintosh vintage equipment. And this is our workhorse preamp. This is the 26. Um, our technician, Ben, just mentioned this is his absolute favorite preamp from this series or from this era. You've got the 24, 26, 28. This is the most reliable and the better designed and engineered one out of the bunch. And it's got the traditional Macintosh look, so this could pair nicely with many of their amplifiers from this era. Uh, you can differentiate the eras a lot by the style of the knobs and by the style of the end caps on here. Typical Macintosh, beautifully built, glass face plate, great solid mm, metal work throughout. This particular sample is absolutely pristine. There's not a speck of rust on this. Uh, a lot of these preamps, unfortunately, were kept in basements at some point when they stopped functioning and they would corrode from moisture, but this one had a good life, must have lived in a cabinet, probably built into the wall for a long time. It is absolutely minty. Look at these connectors, even all the RCAs that don't have any tarners or and all these uh, uh, binding posts are there and intact. Give you a top shot at the cool logos that they would put on the top indicating the, the circuitry layout. Uh, this particular unit, although we've got several C26s, this one went through a full restoration. You can see here, uh, we even went and replaced the capacitors here. We have these custom made for us by a third party. Um, so a lot of love and care went into this C26 and getting it working reliably for the next couple of decades. 
It is being offered at $21.99 on our website, and it will come in a Macintosh box. I mentioned earlier, that's the only way to ship these things. So we, we, we go so far with the restoration work that uh, we're also super careful in packing to make sure that it arrives safely. So Macintosh C26, solid state preamp. And uh, it's not lit right now, but if you can imagine, uh, these are all backlit through the glass. Uh, all the lettering glows green, uh, which is a great look at night. This SuperTech is, is a brand we hadn't seen here before. And it's a very small manufacturing numbers, uh, all hand build. Um, um, where I'm only showing here the actual controller with the tube stage in it. It's a two chassis preamp, meaning there is a separate box uh, containing the power supply and the rectifier. Here you see it. It's got a single rectifier tip tube and the power supply is inside the cabinet. Believe it or not, this is a remote controllable preamp. Um, hidden just below the wood cabinet is a sensor for the remote control, which is super cool. And it does have a full blown phono section in it. So absolutely gorgeous piece between the wood, the shape, the, the modest size, and the, the chrome finish, uh, it's absolutely beautiful. Here you can get an indication that this is a hand-built unit. Uh, the labels here are actually probably made with a label maker, but don't be fooled. It's a beautifully built piece. Uh, we're offering it for $25.99, including the remote and the manual, the SuperTac chain in to preamplifier. This is actually two separate products, but I'm gonna feature them together because it's likely that someone would in fact buy them as one. Mark Levinson, number 26, uh, dual monaural preamplifier. This is about second from the top. There was one just above this that is uber rare, but this is a, a, a wonderful preamp, uh, built in Mark Levinson fashion. <coughs> it is a step up from the ML7 in both age and uh, it's, you know, it's newer. Uh, design model and it has a bit more features on it. So it's a more full featured preamp than the ML7 that I featured earlier. <coughs> Balance controls are managed here. We've got a stereo mono switch on it. Output level, beautiful silky smooth volume control on it. Here is our input selector, also super smooth and uh, managing the tape outputs here. So this is a two chassis dual monaural preamp and this is uh, obviously the controller and one of these things here is the power supply. The number 226 would be the power supply, really either one of them. Um, I'll go back to the other boxes on top in a bit. Uh, on the back we've got typical Mark Levinson 80s fashion. We got CAMAC connectors here, um, one set of XLRs which is super nice. Uh, and also one set of XLR inputs, which are optional to this piece and included. So the circuitry, the appropriate circuitry is included in this to make these XLRs work. Um, and then the power supply here with the proper umbilical cord that connects the power supply. This is being offered at $39.99 and it's in beautiful condition uh, for its age. Now above it is uh, these two boxes here constitute a phono section. So this is the power supply and this is the actual phono preamp. You could purchase them together and have a full feature preamp or you could purchase them separately in case you wanna add this to your existing preamp. So the number 25 is the right model designation for it and it is being offered at $34.99 including the power supply. It is a stereophile class A rated phono preamp and about as sweet as you're gonna get for low output and moving coil. Looking at the back, we're back to the CAMAC connectors, which we will include at least one set. And the power supply uses the same bell call that we've seen for the preamp. Again, um, number 25 with a PLS226 power supply from Mark Levinson at $34.99. This is probably my favorite vintage piece in the shop. This is a Macintosh MX110 that's been fully restored in two different phases, and I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, it is a tuner preamp, so it's got a very capable FM section in it, as illustrated by the uh, display here up top. It matches the sort of look of the Macintosh C22 preamp, where we've got half glass, half brushed metal. This one is absolutely mint, or close to mint. I use that word very carefully, but this is um, as good as it gets in terms of cleanliness. It is in a custom cabinet that just finishes off just beautifully. It's got an acrylic top so you can see all the glory and all the, all the goodies inside of this MX-110. 
on the back, uh, tons of connections here for RCAs, a couple of convenience jacks. But look at this chrome work, no pitting whatsoever, no rust, nothing, absolutely super, super clean. So, and even you can spot these uh, SkyFi branded capacitors, these multi-section caps that we have custom made for us. So we didn't hold back at all on this particular piece. So this, um, the tuna section was moder ferry um, upgraded and then we did the restoration on all the audio circuitry. It is being offered at $6,000 on our website. Again, the Macintosh MX110 and you'll pick up the MX is their designation, their two letter designation for, um, in a, for tuner preamps, which they've made a few over the years, but this is the one to get. All right, this video is one of my favorites. It's a Krell KRC. This is from the 1990s. Beautifully built piece, upboard power supply. It's a line level preamp, so it's got no phono section in it, but it has a ton of both balanced and unbalanced or single-ended inputs and outputs. Uh, beautifully made um, in Krell sort of battleship fashion. Looking at the back, uh, power supply connects with a um, sort of computer port, and we've got uh, XLRs. Let's see, we've got one set of XLR outputs, two set of XLR inputs, tons of analog and a ground. So this might have an optional, the ability to take a phono card, but we don't have that phono card. This is being offered at $3,500 at skyfiaudio.com. And it comes with, um, as you see here, with the remote, power supply, power cords, etc. And uh, we actually have the original manual and the, uh, we'll make a box for this unit. Second piece is also a really interesting piece. This is a Goldman Mimesis 2 preamp, only one we've ever had in the shop. Uh, I'm a huge fan of Goldman as well. All the Swiss companies are, are among my favorites. This is um, a, essentially a line stage preamp, but we've got the optional Goldman phono section, which is uber, uber rare. Um, so you, there's an actual connection uh, for it in the back and you actually route your turntable through it into one of the inputs. So it's fully integrated into it. It's just an external phono. Um, it's got about five sets of inputs, it's got tape loops, uh, and this really cool sort of um, Swiss form factor. Looking at the back, you've got one set of XLR outputs, actually those are inputs. And we've got uh, a bunch of RCAs, one, two, three, four, five, one of them being a phono if needed. This is being offered uh, at skyfiorder.com at $44.99. And it comes, as you see, the phono section and the uh, preamp itself. I suspect someone's gonna buy this just for the phono section because it's so rare. The next piece is also super rare. Um, this is a Sony E1 preamp. I did a full featured review on this. I'll put a link below to it uh, where we reviewed. I cracked it open, uh, showed the ins and outs of it. It's a beautifully built super rare piece from Sony. We're actually offering this up with the amplifier, which is the TAE1, I'm sorry, the TAN1. Um, but if you're interested in just a preamp, do reach out to us. Uh, line level or line stage preamp, so no phono section in this beauty. Um, built to match their Super Audio CD player in terms of form function, form function and, um, and the look and feel. It's got this sort of um, cool bluish sides with the hexagonal top or front plate. Uh, on the back we've got one set of XLRs in and one set of XLRs out. The rest are all single-ended. And check this out, uh, the chassis split uh, physically into two sections, power supply on one side and the analog section on the other. I do encourage you to watch the video because the internals of this preamp in particular is pretty amazing. We're offering the amp and preamp together at 25,000, uh, but again reach out if you're looking for just the preamp. Um, and then uh, included with this unit is uh, a printed manual and the power cord. Another line stage preamp, this time it's from Krell and it's semi-modern. It's uh, I think not just generation, but just the one before it. Uh, Phantom 3 line stage from Krell. Uh, it takes optional cards. I think there's a DAC card that you can pop into this bay right here. And there may also be a phono section. Um, two sets of balanced ins, one set of uh, balanced outs. The rest are RCAs, uh, one through three. 
uh, beautifully built, all aluminum. And on this particular unit, we've got the original box, the manual, and the remote, uh, which is also an, a, a solid affair. Um, it's offered at $34.99 at skyfiaudio.com. Now we're going back in time. This is an Audio Research SP8. Now SP means that it's a full function preamp. That means it has a phono section built into it. We, um, we did a light restoration on this piece, or let's say servicing. Um, Single-ended only. Uh, we've got one, two, three, four, five sets of inputs, including a phono section with a grounding lug here, uh, switchable outlets on the right. This is a tube unit, of course, uh, in the tradition of early audio research equipment. I'll show you the inside. Um, it's on our website here. Uh, this is being offered at uh, $34.99 at skyfiaudio.com, and it's the Audio Research SP8. Okay, and staying with the tube motif, now we're at the Macintosh C2200. This is um, one of the earlier of the preamps from Macintosh that has meters. Uh, 2200 was subsequently followed by the 23, then the 25, 26, all the way I think we're now in the 27s. Um, very nice design, uh, full-featured preamp, uh, including obviously the, the coveted Macintosh meters. It has a phono section as well that is tube driven uh, and a ton of inputs and outputs. We've got four sets of XLRs, uh, at least five or six sets of, of RCAs. And on the output side, I love this about Macintosh, they give you tons of outputs, three sets of XLRs and three sets of RCAs, including a tape loop. Um, this piece uh, also was had a light service from us. It is being offered at $44.99. And what is included with this unit is the original box, which is really the only way to safely ship these Macintosh pieces with the glass on them. We have the original manual and the remote. This now is an Audible Illusions Modulus 3 preamp. It's a two-piece unit, meaning we've got a separate power supply. It does have a phono section built into it. We received this unit, we retubed it using uh, some soft text. Uh, 6922s in particular. It is single-ended and in design, uh, only RCA inputs and outputs. It's a great sounding preamp. Um, I think besides the tubes, we ish, um, address some issues with some of the LEDs that light up these knobs. Uh, but other than that, it tests real good and it's working beautifully. We're super happy with how it came out. It is $24.99 at skyfiaudio.com. So this is a name NAC 202. Um, as you can see, name executes everything extremely simply, but um, word counts, which is on the internals, are always incredibly impressive. Uh, the 202 is um, sort of mid-range in, in the lineup for name. Uh, it's a one generation old, I believe. Um, this particular model has some RCA connections for CD and auxiliary which we like to see nowadays, a nice mix of them. Obviously, the rest of the connections are all name and DIN. Uh, it has no power supply. You're, it's intended to be used with either an external power supply or a, uh, another, uh, let's say, a name amplifier that would supply power to it. So if you're looking for this piece and you've never had name before and don't have any other pieces, this might not be a good fit for you unless you went out and found the matching power supply, which are readily available. Uh, this is being offered at $2,000. And it comes with a remote and one cable to connect this to another unit, uh, a DIN cable. And we've got a printed manual for it. And, um, oh, and if you want us to match this with something else for you, let us know. This is a gorgeous CL35 uh, preamp MK2 or MK3 from Luxpin. This is a new old stock unit. We actually unbox this. There's a video for this preamp that's available on our channel. Full function preamp, it's got phono section, tons of tone controls um, for bass and treble with three sets of frequency ranges to attenuate. Uh, typical vintage Luxman flipper knobs and plastic knobs mixed with the aluminum ones in a, in a brushed champagne almost like finish. Gorgeous wooden cabinet to go with it. Looking at the back, it's got facilities uh, for step-up transformers if you have a very low output cartridge. Uh, tons of uh, RCA inputs, the ability to attenuate a couple of them. Here's some loading for the cartridges. Convenience outlets. 
absolutely gorgeous piece uh, one of our favorites here you can see if you remove this this is where all the tubes are located uh, this is a complete kit meaning that uh, it comes as originally uh, would have come from the factory including all the packing and manuals and just about everything and it'll be like a new experience we'll pack this up so whoever gets the whoever's lucky enough to be the next owner can unpack it as if it was a brand new unit uh, we have of course tested it to make sure there's no disappointment at the other end uh, give you a sense of what else is included look at the all the literature the super cool box from Luxman and and the AX7 tubes so pro Amprex so the tubes themselves are extremely valuable this is on our website being offered at 7,000 uh, skyfiaudio.com this next piece is a spectral DMC6 this is not on our website as I make this video but we're gonna try to get this listed uh, this week the external power supply it's got a dual power supply um, this is gonna be 1990s vintage um, Let's see, it's got uh, one set of outputs and one, two, three, four, five, uh, five sets of inputs. Here's the umbilical for the power supply. I'm not quite sure if we've got a phono card in this unit, but we will, <coughs> we'll put that in the listing when, when this gets going. Um, by the way, when you're on our website, if you want to just search for the part number, you can also search for the our SKU, which is 102302, and that'll pop it up. So Spectral DMC6. Um, this is going to be priced around the $2,500 range. All right, closing out this preamp series uh, with this Macintosh C1100. It's a two chassis uh, tube preamp with a very capable phono section in it. You can see the audio circuitry and the tubes are on this lower chassis and the controls are on this top chassis. I love when preamps are split up into several components and this is no exception. This has been recently replaced by the C12000, which is, has some slight improvements. Uh, but, you know, up until very recently, this was their flagship preamp. Um, this is only being offered in our store. We're not going to advertise the price here in this video. If you're interested in it, you have to be in the local marketplace to purchase this. We cannot ship it, but I thought I'd feature it anyway and close out this video on the C1100 from Macintosh. I've enjoyed making this video for you. Thanks for watching. SkyFiAudio.com is our website. I'll give you kind of a glimpse of how much equipment we've got here for you. Almost everything here is listed on our website. And uh, please like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. It's a new format for us. Haven't done this this way before. Um, but let me know if it works out, whether I didn't go into enough detail or I went into too much detail and, and how this uh, video flows. So thanks for watching and stay in touch, please.